One of the killer features of Omnisphere 2 has to be the filter system. Not only are they gorgeous sounding filters with tons of algorithms to choose from, but you get two of them per layer on an already powerful four layer patch system, giving you a total of eight filters per preset. Given how powerful these filters are, one of the least understood aspects of them has to be the variant and offset controls, which can be extremely powerful, especially in the context of ambient music. So in today's video, we're going to fully dive into Omnisphere 2's filter system so you can understand how to use them properly so you can add these techniques to your own ambient productions. So if you like this kind of quick tutorial video, be sure to check out my Patreon. There, you'll find tons of presets for all your favorite synthesizers, tons of extra tutorials, the science circle, ambient coaching, and so much more. Check it out, the link is down below. And finally, if you're ready to take the old Omnisphere 2 plunge, be sure to check out the affiliate link below and get your copy from Perfect Circuit. Not only is it in stock and available now, but by using that affiliate link, you're helping to support this channel so I can keep making great tutorials just like this one. That being said, let's get into some Omnisphere 2. What's up guys, Chris here from Signs of Life. Welcome back and welcome to this quick tutorial on Omnisphere 2. I wanted to put a quick video out there to hopefully explain some of the finer points of Omnisphere 2's filter system because I feel like the filters are one of the killer features of Omnisphere 2. Omnisphere 2, as you know, is extremely powerful, but it can also be very complicated. So if I can simplify things for you, hopefully you guys can add these techniques to your own ambient productions, all right? So let's dive in and we're gonna zero in on Omnisphere 2's filter. Now, when I click on the power button, obviously now you have control over Omnisphere 2's filter. This is just the default uh, sawtooth wave. Uh, and on the, on the front here, you have cutoff resonance, key, and envelope. Now, uh, you also have gain and variant control. And variant, we're gonna talk about in just a second. So. Uh, we're just gonna turn off the envelope now and the key for now, okay? But what you might not know is that if we had these on, if we had say the envelope, if you click these buttons right here, that's the inversion control. So you have quick access to the inversion controls of what those do. The envelope is obviously the filter envelope, how much of it, but if you wanted a reverse filter envelope, you just click this little button right here. That's kind of cool. So um, now let's dive in. We're gonna turn these all the way down again. And now let's dive into the actual filter system. Omnisphere 2 has four different layers and two filters per layer. So that's eight different filters that you have access to, uh, which is really uh, handy and also like very powerful because you could like separate those out and do all kinds of crazy stuff per layer. Uh, and so when you're presented with the default, you're presented with just filter one running in series, meaning you're only, you only have access to filter one and it's the only one active. So a cutoff is a cutoff. You guys understand this. Uh, if I turn down the resonance here, you're gonna, that's the cutoff point of this filter shape. Now you have access to all these different types of filters. You have the low pass filters, the high pass filters, the band pass, and then the more creative ones, the formant, the resonators, and the state variable filters, just like on the hydrosynth. Uh, so that's cool. Um, but let's just keep it simple for this kind of simple tutorial, all right? Uh, let's just go with like, I like the UVI, it's nice. Um, let's also just go maybe a, a warm low pass filter 12 dB, okay? So um, without even getting into the like, you know, the the whole parallel thing, we're, we're gonna get that in just a second. What is variant? Because variant here has offset controls down here and, and down here. And then you also have a variant knob, which is also found on the front. Now. Variant in its most simple terms is separating out the stereo field, uh, which can be really cool in an ambient context if you think about it. So when I click this, when I just start playing and then click this variant slider, you hear that it kind of moves it left to right? That's cool, all right? What is it saying? It's saying, well, now we're separating out the stereo field of this single filter. And that, and you know, and, and you can make this like a ping pong or something like, I mean, that's cool. You can do something with that. But where variant gets really powerful is when you start adding more than one filter on it, okay? And we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Let me, let me cover the offset first. So offset is basically telling Omnisphere, okay, we're gonna move the, the, off, the cutoff point to a different location, all right? So if you imagine it like a, like a wheel or a clock, if I said, okay, this is all the way, three, let's go three quarters, okay? Now the cutoff isn't gonna kick in until three quarters to the right, okay? Um, and the same thing with resonance. So if I said this is now three quarters to the left, now resonance 
is gonna do nothing because that resonance point is now shifted. You're shifting it over, all right? Um, it takes a minute to think about this and how you could use this, but you can do this ever so subtly and it really you can really make some cool, interesting filters of your own uh, very quickly. Now, that's one of the cool things about Omnisphere is that you can make these filters. Like, you can obviously like put together something and then save that as a preset and then you have your own cool, unique filter that you couldn't find in many other synthesizers. I can't even name one that has this type of depth and this type of control. So anyway, so when I have resonance and cutoff offset, now we're offsetting the cutoff and the resonance. So kind of like a stereo feature, kind of like in Vital, where you have that stereo uh, effect. That's really cool. I love that. I love that, all right? So if I did the same thing with variant, now when I move the variant knob, it's gonna offset it a little bit, right? All the way, let's go three quarters to the right. And now nothing's happening until I get three quarters to the left, okay? Now the other cool thing is all of this is modulatable. So you can modulate all this and then we're gonna do that in just a second. Um, it's really, it's really quite powerful, all right? So again, we're only on one filter and we're only running in series. Now let's click on the second filter by clicking parallel and now turning on a second filter. Let's tr let's try like a a pat like a juicy 24. Okay, high pass filter. Um, when as soon as we click on parallel, now this mix slider becomes active. Mix slider, as you probably guessed, is how much of filter one are we going to use and how much of filter two. So when I move this left and right, we're getting all the high pass filter and we're all the low pass filter. All right. But now listen to what happens when we start using variant. Whoa. Now we're getting some really interesting textures and tones with that variant knob because it's saying, well, we have two filters to work with, but how much of each one and it's mixing it all together, it's pretty wild. Um, so we can play with the offset here, cut off the resonance offset. Let's do this and watch, listen to this. Oh my gosh. I mean. That's a really interesting stereo mix, right? And as soon as you put that through reverb or something, that's insane. So you could add, let, let, let's say, uh, I don't know, we're gonna, we're gonna just kind of offset this a little bit here. Wait, let's go extreme. And then we're gonna go like this and then, right? And now you could right click this and say modulate, modulate with an LFO. Turn on the depth, turn on the rate a little bit. Right? Now for a pad, that might really work, okay? So we could shape that, mold that into like a pad sort of shape real quick. And you can see, uh, Omnisphere 2's preset obviously becomes modified. So you have, you're, you're basically creating your own filter out of this. As you can see, Variant is now, you know, blue, which means it's, it's being modulated. So that's cool, right? But we can even go further with this. We could say, all right, what if we did this uh, like like really quickly, but we only modulated, say, the offset or the variant of uh, filter one, right? So let's modulate this with an LFO. Let's turn up the rate really quickly. Now filter two is not being affected, but filter one is. Now what if we said, okay, let, that's cool, but what if we, what if we said, all right, well we have filter, like this is now dependent on aftertouch, right? So it, this, on, this, this effect only happens um, with aftertouch. So check this out. We could go depth and then we could lower this all the way down to zero and say modulate all mod sources aftertouch. Now watch. Right? So now, when I lay into the keys, I get that cool offset effect. Neat, right? So listen to this with the backing track. Start changing the mix here. <laughs> That's interesting to me, right? Okay, we're gonna come back to the backing track in just a second. Um, so you can understand like how deep you could go with this. Uh, let's, let's let's make this like say a uh, a warm twenty four. Oh yeah. Okay. 
And now we can do, let's, let's add the filter envelope. So now we're gonna add the filter envelope in here. Let's get a filter envelope going. So now, right? Nice and subtle. And do you hear how like, it, it went, as soon as you lay into those keys, it kind of kicks in and it gives you that vibrato. That's in a practical use case. What if I went crazy with it and I put it on like random or something? You could get some really wild sound design stuff going on here. Okay, what is key? I wanna, I wanna, I wanna emphasize on that. So these buttons right here kind of give you an octave range. This is like a five different octave range slider. So when I hit this, now listen, it's different every single time. Because what I'm saying is, the filter is now active at this octave range, or this, it kicks in, basically a kick in point. So it doesn't kick in with the lower octave, then it kicks in the octave range number two. I think this is probably like set to like, you know, the, the ones, the twos, threes, fours, and fives. So I'm playing what, like C3 here or something? And then it gets, as we get higher, it gets lower. It's more extreme when you go watch this. All the way open, meaning it kicks in earlier, and then it kicks in later, you see? Okay, and now it barely kicks in. Cool, all right, you guys understand that now. So, let's modulate the cutoff. Let's say modulate with an LFO, make it really slow, all right? Turn on the depth. Now we have offset being modulated with aftertouch. We have an overall filter cutoff. And again, this is just on a default saw wave. Now it opens up. Oof, that's nice. Let's make this a, uh, a gentle, to kind of give it a more practicality angle. I like this. Change the variant. There we go. Start getting some cool like offset. That's nice. Now let's go back to the back of track. That's some delay and reverb. So you see, like, just by creating your own filter shape and really starting to play with the stereo feel, you can get some wild effects. Because when you do put it through, listen. Right? I hope you fully understand it now. Offset, again, which side, right? With the resonance and the cutoff, and even the variant itself. And then variant being the key to like unlocking full stereo capabilities inside these filters. It's extremely powerful. This is part of a much larger tutorial that I'm gonna do in a couple weeks, but I just wanted to get this out here really quick so you guys can understand it and start to build some patches, all right? <laughs> this is just a default thought, dude. Imagine what you do with this, with all these kind of samples and you do it per layer and you got all these wild effects and you can have like a really like electronic thing going on on one layer with some deep pad kind of, I mean, it just, it just blows my mind how powerful this is. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want more quick tutorials like this in the future, just let me know. Always happy to oblige. Happy ambient music to make it. As you know, my name is Chris from Signs of Life. Take good care, and as always, keep your heads in the clouds and your feet planted firmly on the ground. I'll see you guys in the next one.